councillors. Uh, Deputy Martin Kenny, you have four minutes. Thank you, Lesko Hirlock. Um, Minister, the issue that I raise here today in the topical issue is around uh, wheelchair accessibility transport, bus transport, uh, on the bus air on Route 480 between Donegal Town and Sligo Town, which includes access to Sligo IT. Uh, this is an issue that has been raised particularly by uh, a lady living in, in Ballyshannon named Victoria Matthews, who has protested and has, has really campaigned very hard on this. She's a wheelchair user herself. She has a course which she intends to carry out in the IT in Sligo and there is no public transport for to bring her there on because wheelchair accessibility is not possible on the bus that serves that route at present. Now, when she started this campaign, it led to many, many others in similar situations in many parts of the country raising the issue and in fact there has been articles both in the Irish Times and in other uh, newspapers generally about this issue and Minister the answer that we get back when we talk to to people in Bus Aaron is that they are moving toward a situation where wheelchair accessibility or where transport will be accessible to all is what we want to see happen and that they're moving toward that and that's that's a, a, if you like a target that they have over a period of time now to do that properly, what they need to be doing is, in as many places as possible, particularly in relatively short routes, which the route from Donegal Town to Sligo is, is using the buses that have the low access, where you just pull in, there's a short ramp that comes out, and the person with the wheelchair is on the bus very quickly. That's the model that we need to see happen, and that's the model that we need to see happen in most places. And when I speak to bus Aaron in Sligo, they tell me that there is a number of buses that they have available doing that, but they're not allocated to that route, and they tell me that allocating them as to what route they go on is actually not done by bus Aaron, it's done by the, the transport agency. So that comes back to, if you like, a little bit of disconnect there that needs to be resolved. Um, Minister, I, I, I understand and I'm sure you have a written reply telling me about all the places where there is uh, public transport which is accessible to all. But really it's about this route and many, many routes in rural Ireland and in rural areas where people in wheelchairs and people who have difficulties and have disabilities want to access public transport, not just from the point of view of uh, having equality with everyone else, but also because it would enhance their lives and maybe have a sense of future for them to where there could be courses that they could do, want to do in colleges like this lady wants to do or employment opportunities they may want to take up, which they don't even look at because at the moment the opportunity for to travel to those places is closed off from them because there isn't proper access on the bus routes. So Minister, I, I look forward to your reply and I hope that we can see she's particularly Vicky Matthews is starting this course I think at the end of September next year or this year sorry. So we need to see uh, fully wheelchair accessible transport in place between Donegal Town and Sligo IT in particular but really to the Sligo destination on that route 480 before then. And I would appeal to the Minister to make that happen. Gromagov. Thank you, Minister. Um, I'd like to thank the Deputy for raising this issue. And I'm, I'm aware of the campaign and I'm aware of the, uh, of the specific case which he's, to which he's referring. Um, I think you'll be aware of the fact too that as Minister uh, for Transport, whereas we have concentrated and done an enormous amount for disabilities, uh, and there's, there's no doubt about that. It's shown in the figures, it's shown in, in the results. We cannot do everything, and I, and I cannot intervene in a specific uh, case or, or specific uh, route uh, to satisfy one particular person, however awful their hardship is, because uh, I think that, that is not my role. But I certainly will, uh, will pass on what you say about that case to the relevant body, which is the NTA, and let them know. Uh, I think is, uh, it is what we've done for disabilities in the area of transport and what the Transport Committee has done and what Senator John Dolan has done and Finney McGrath and others who are involved in this in this House uh, has, been, has made a great deal of progress, but it's not enough progress. And when you come to, when you come to see, to bring a case like that before this House, you make the case and it's an impeccable and unanswerable case. And we're going to do everything we possibly can to see that as soon as possible you won't be able to come into this house with cases like that, nor, nor, nor will any other TD. There are multiple cases of it around the country at the moment. I know you're, 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 you're right about that because of the fact that certain uh, coaches are, as you know, uh, not fully wheelchair accessible. Uh, and, uh, but the, we are moving as fast as we can in that direction. And uh, your case, which is compelling, will of course be conveyed to the NTA. Uh, and I will suggest to them that it should
spur them on to further efforts to, uh, to make sure that the necessary measures are taken countrywide, which we're aiming to take as soon as possible. I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of public transport. This is a very good and suitable forum for you to bring up the case, but you wouldn't expect me to say, yes, I'm going to move in to do something with the 4480 between Donegal Town and Sligo, including access to Sligo uh, IT this evening. It, it's not something which is either within my power or would be possible for me to do. But what you do is you highlight the cases which are there, the case which is there, and others undoubtedly which are in the same boat. I've explained to the House previously that under the Dublin Transport Authority Act 2008, the NTA has statutory responsibility for promoting the development of an integrated accessible public transport network. In addition, the NTA has responsibility for the, for the purchase of bus and coach fleets required by Bus Erin, to which uh, you re referred Dublin Bus, Go Ahead, and other operators who operate subsidised PSO bus services on behalf of the NTA. The NTA has advised that Dublin Bus and Go Ahead fleets are fully wheelchair, wheelchair accessible by ramp. All urban services operated by Bus Erin are also fully wheelchair accessible by ramp. However, and this is uh, something which obviously the deputy wishes to highlight, Bus Erin's regional services are primarily operated using high floor coaches, which are wheelchair accessible by lift. In practice, lifts are less flexible than ramps as they require the removal of seating in order to accommodate passengers in wheelchairs. I'm advised that for that reason, passengers need to give Bus Erin advance notice of their intention to travel. In addition, a large flat area of adjacent footpath is required to operate the lift typically three metres wide and three and a half metres in depth. According to the NTA, in many towns and villages, it is extremely challenging to achieve the necessary footpath, footpath dimensions for the vehicle lift to function. Solutions, such as relocating the bus stop to an alternative location, may be necessary, but this can give rise to additional problems in that the alternative stop location may not suit other users. In other cases, land or property acquisitions may be required to obtain the necessary space, potentially requiring the exercise of compulsory acquisition powers to acquire the relevant lands. The NTAs. Okay. Back to you. Yep. Deputy Kenny. Uh, thank you, Minister. And I understand while you can't deal specifically with this case, I'd, I'd like to just broaden it out for a couple of minutes. Um, Speaking to, and I, I met with Vicky and I met with other wheelchair users in Ballyshannon in the last couple of weeks, and they tell me, for instance, if they want to go to Dublin Airport on the bus, uh, yes, they can use a bus which has a, a, a ramp, one of the lifts to get onto, and they feel that this is, is, is most inappropriate because it really emphasises their difference in society, because the bus has to stop, they have this huge area of footpath that takes up, this ramp comes out, comes down, and the, someone of them said it's like loading cargo and takes 10 minutes almost for them to get loaded onto the bus. And then if that person on a long bus trip particularly, and very few of them use it because they, they try to get it to a train, because at least on a train there's, there's toilet facilities, there's, that doesn't exist on the bus, and the bus doesn't stop. And if it does stop somewhere where they want to use the toilet, it's a siege and a half for to get off the bus and get back on again. So really, Minister, you know, that there needs to be a bit, of, a bit of joined up thinking here around all this. And while I, I, I know your, your um, reference to the National Transport Authority in respect of that is, is well and good, and the, the use of these buses, which are the high floor buses, that, that basically they don't work for people in wheelchairs or for, for people with disabilities in general. Because even if I, I looked at the bus that's been used, that one in Donegal, it was actually parked in the, the bus station in Ballyshannon one of the days we were up there. And there, I think I counted there were six steps to get up to the level of the bus. So even if you take away the person in the wheelchair, the, person, the elderly person, the person with, with uh, uh, diff older people who are frail, people who have, who have diff difficulty walking or difficulty using steps, it is, it is a serious issue. So, Minister, I think what we need to do here is, is quickly move to a situation where we're talking about the low-access buses as many places as possible, where, particularly where you're looking at long journeys, if, if rail transport can be used and is more accessible, there needs to make sure that there's links to that for people with disability for going on long journeys. And I think that in some cases you're talking about going back to trying to have a taxi for to bring people to, to maybe to college or things like that. But in this particular case, there's a solution there. There are buses based in Sligo, that have the low access. And if those buses are deferred onto this route, it can be solved. And I appreciate it's not your job to, to direct the, the National Transport Authority, but at the same time, I'm sure you could have a conversation with them without directing them. Hopefully they hear what you're saying, Deputy. Yeah, I, I, 
And so can you, and so can you, Deputy, and I, I'm sure they'll be accessible to you as, as, as well as they are to me. But I, look, I agree with everything you say. I won't be content until we've got a, a situation where those in wheelchairs can travel as easily as, as, as we can. And we're nowhere near that situation yet, but we are hopefully, and I'm not saying anything in any way self-satisfiedly, in, 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 in a mood of self-satisfaction, hopefully we're moving in that direction and we've acknowledged it with additional funds and, and fast moves in, 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 the, in the direction of, of greater accessibility, but it's not good enough yet. Let me just update you with the situation as it is now. The NTA's objective is to upgrade bus stops where possible to ensure that all main towns have at least one wheelchair lift accessible bus stop in each direction. This program is at an early stage. The NTA advised that plans are in progress for the installation of wheelchair accessible stops at Ballyshannon and Sligo bus stations. However, according to them, it is likely to be 2020 or 2021 before those works are completed. The NTA is aware that high floor single deck coaches do not offer, and this is what uh, the deputy referred to, a good customer ex experience to wheelchair users. While there is currently no viable alternative to the use of these vehicles on longer distance services, the NTA, along with Bus Aaron, are implementing a change in its fleet strategy for, for shorter regional commuter services in future. An increasing number of these services will be operated by low entry coach style vehicles rather than high floor coaches. The NTA is in the process of procuring these vehicles, which are equipped with a ramp at the entrance door suitable for the mobility impaired and a dedicated wheelchair space within a low floor area in the front half of that vehicle. In the normal course of events, operators are responsible for determining the allocation of bus fleet to individual bus routes. From a policy perspective, I advised the House recently that one of my priorities is to complete a review of existing public transport policy as committed to under the Programme for a Partnership Government. This review is a significant and substantial resource commitment, and my department has commenced and substantially completed the research and analysis required. I urge everyone, including members of the Raptors, to take the opportunity to contribute to the public consultation and outline their views on all aspects of public transport policy, including in relation to accessible public transport. Thank you very much, Minister. Now, um